Now, in this case, there's nothing that we can factor out that is common amongst all four terms, because mostly because of that stinking three, which is okay. It's, well, we'll see how that plays out. So what I'm going to do is move right into factoring by grouping. So I'm going to look at my first two terms right here. And it looks like I can factor out a 4 and 2x's. So I, I have the x squared. So I've got 4x squared. And what's left from the 12x cubed looks like it would be 3x. And again, if you had multiplied these two together, you'd get that 12x cubed. Okay. Then we subtracted. Uh, 8 divided by 4 would be 2. And then we took out the x squared. So that's gone. Is everyone okay with that? All right, let's try the next one. So I'm going to make that plus a negative 3x plus 2. We don't like that first coefficient to be negative. So let's factor out a negative 1. And then what's left over is a 3x. But now we're going to change that to a minus 2. And sure enough, this 3x minus 2 matches this 3x minus 2. So we can factor that out. 3x minus 2. And then what do we have left? We've got this 4x squared and the minus 1. <clears throat> yeah, in this second set of parentheses right here, we've got two perfect squares. 4 is a perfect square. x squared is a perfect square. And 1 is a perfect square. So what I, what I mean by this is, well, we'll factor this one by grouping as well. None of this is going to affect the 3x minus 2 because we can't factor that out any further. But I'm going to change this to 4x cubed. Uh, we'll make it a plus 0x minus 1. Now this is, this is why you have to notice these perfect squares because if you stop at 4x squared minus 1, you'll still get some credit on the test, but not full credit. Okay. So... And like we've been talking about, we've got to look at the A value and the C value and multiply those two together. So let me give myself some space. So I've got 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. And we need two of these factors to add together and give us the B value, which is 0. So I'm just going to use 2 and negative 2. So the 0 is going to split into a 2x and a negative 2x. And we still have the 4x squared plus that 2x minus, minus the 1. Um, so, again, none of this is really affecting that 3x minus 2. But in this first group, looks like we can factor out a 2x. And we have a 2x plus 1 left over. And we're going to subtract, well, just a 1, which leaves us with a 2x plus 1 left over from these two, which we added together. So we can see the grouping there. We've got the 3x minus 2. And then we're going to factor out that 2x plus 1 from both of these two terms. And then we just have whatever was left over, which was the 2x minus 1. And as far as I can tell, that is as far as it goes for factoring this one. Here's one of the reasons why we have to be very careful with that is because if we stop at this point and checked our work, it would factor back in and give us exactly what we started with. All right. Which means that we would think, oh, I'm good to go. But we do have to check to make sure we don't have any perfect squares, the difference of two perfect squares, or the sum or difference of cube stuff.